this festive season of the year, many of you may not have considered the real significance of what Christians celebrate at Christmas or why. There are those who dismiss the whole thing as a myth or a fable, assuming that Jesus Christ never existed or that we couldn't prove it either way. These people are incorrect. The truth is that Jesus is not only documented in the eyewitness testimony compiled in the New Testament, but he is mentioned as a historical person by several non-Christian sources within 150 years of his life. From these sources, we can learn 10 things about Jesus without even opening a Bible. Let me share them with you. Number one, he was known to be wise and virtuous. This fact was reported by Jewish historian Flavius Josephus, who was born around AD 37. In his Antiquities of the Jews, he reports, quote, At this time there was a wise man named Jesus. His conduct was good, and he was known to be virtuous, unquote. Number two, he had a brother named James. In recounting the stoning of James, Josephus records, quote, So he assembled the Sanhedrin of judges and brought before them the brother of Jesus, who was called Christ, whose name was James, and some others. And when he had formed an accusation against them as breakers of the law, he delivered them to be stoned, unquote. Number three, he was known to perform miracles. Celsus was a second century Greek philosopher and a fierce opponent of Christianity. In what is known to be the first comprehensive intellectual attack on Christianity, he tried to resolve why Jesus was able to perform miracles. The story is wild, but the main point is that by trying to explain away the miracles of Jesus, Celsus is actually affirming that they happened. Quote, Jesus, on account of his poverty, was hired out to go to Egypt. While there, he acquired certain powers which Egyptians pride themselves on possessing. He returned home highly elated at possessing these powers and on the strength of them gave himself out to be a god. Unquote. Number four. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. This fact comes to us from one of the most trusted historians of the ancient world. Cornelius Tacitus was born in AD 56 and served as a respected senator and proconsul under Roman Emperor Vespasian in Asia. He wrote a history of the first century Roman Empire, which many historians consider to be the pinnacle of Roman historical writing. He notes, quote, Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators, Pontus Pilatus. Josephus confirms, Pilate condemned him to be crucified and to die, unquote. Number five. His crucifixion was accompanied by darkness and an earthquake. This fact was originally recorded by a Samaritan historian named Thallus, who was alive at the same time Jesus was, A.D. 5 through 60. He wrote a three-volume history of the first century Mediterranean world, which unfortunately no longer exists. But before his writings were lost, he was cited by another ancient historian, Julius Africanus, in A.D. 221. Africanus described Thallus's account of what happened during Jesus' crucifixion, quote, On the whole world there pressed a most fearful darkness, and the rocks were rent by an earthquake, and many places in Judea and other districts were thrown down, unquote. Number six, he had many Jewish and Gentile disciples. Josephus wrote, quote, And many people from among the Jews and other nations became his disciples. Pilate condemned him to be crucified and to die. And those who had become his disciples did not abandon discipleship, unquote. Number seven, he lived during the time of Tiberius Caesar. Julius Africanus also reported that another ancient historian, Philagan, confirmed the darkness at G the time of Jesus' death and that Jesus was alive in the time of Tiberius Caesar. Quote, Philagon rep records that in the time of Tiberius Caesar, at full moon, there was a full eclipse of the sun, from the sixth hour to the ninth, unquote. Number eight, his disciples believed that he rose from the dead. In his commentary regarding disciples' reaction to Jesus' death, Josephus recorded, quote, Jesus' disciples reported that he appeared to them three days after his crucifixion and that he was alive, unquote. Number nine, his disciples believed that he was God and they met regularly to worship him. 
Pliny the Younger lived from AD 61 to 113 and was an influential lawyer and magistrate of ancient Rome. In a letter to Emperor Trajan, he wrote, quote, They, Christians, were in the habit of meeting on a certain fixed day before it was light, when they sang in alternate verses a hymn to Christ as to a God, and bound themselves by a solemn oath, not to any wicked deeds, but never to commit any fraud, theft, or adultery, never to falsify their word, nor deny a trust when they should be called upon to deliver it up, unquote. Lucian of Samosata was a second-century Greek satirist known for his wit and sarcasm. Even though Christians were the object of his snark, he affirmed certain details about them. Quote, the Christians, you know, worship a man to this day, the distinguished personage who introduced their novel rites, and was crucified on that account. It was impressed on them by their original lawgiver that they are all brothers. From the moment that they are converted and deny the gods of Greece, and worship the crucified sage and live after his laws." Unquote. Number 10. His disciples were willing to suffer and die for their beliefs. The persecution and suffering of early Christians was recorded by Suetonius, the official secretary of the Roman Emperor Hadrian around AD 121. He documented that they were expelled from Rome in AD 49 by Claudius, quote, because the Jews at Rome caused constant disturbances at the instigation of Christus, or Christ, he expelled them from Rome, unquote. And, quote, Nero inflicted punishment on the Christians, a sect given to a new and mischievous religious belief, unquote. Tacitus also confirmed Nero's persecution of early Christians, quote, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on a class hated for their abominations, called Christians by the populace, unquote. Here's the bottom line. From non-Christian and even anti-Christian sources, we can be sure that Jesus in fact existed, was crucified, was believed to be resurrected from the dead, and his many followers were willing to suffer and die for that belief. If the resurrection did not happen, the disciples had to know it. That would mean that they not only died for a lie, but they knew it was a lie. Historically speaking, no one dies for something they know is a lie. The least you can say about the disciples is that they thought the resurrection was the truth. If you've never seriously considered the claims of Jesus Christ, I hope this video has helped you. From the United States, my name is Carrie Sue. Thank you for your attention.